Hello everyone and welcome to Zach's Garage. Now you may notice something immediately, it's sunny and that's because we are in Marbella. I'm going to show you two videos over the next few weeks. One of the Ascari Racecourse where we've been invited out by Zenvo to drive their new car and just to show you the lifestyle of the people who live around Porto Venus and Marbella. And where better to start than a Ferrari dealership. So let's head in and I'll show you guys around. Now as soon as you walk in, the first thing you see, well, it's a field of red. We've got Californias, we've got 458s, we've got 488s, but there's a few rather new models such as the Portofino, we've got a Lusso over there, and some very special ones such as the 599 GTO, there's a few Californias, but I'll show you around. Now something that's quite interesting is the Portofino. Now I know you guys have probably seen loads of videos on these, but this is actually the first time I've come up close with them. And I'm actually really impressed. I think the things they changed this compared to the California, it just gives it a little bit more of a aggressive look. But I tell you what, what a pretty car. Now there is a classic car just behind it, which I want to show you. And it's this, a 512 BB. BB standing for Berlinetta Boxster. What a pretty car. This is something we definitely want in the museum, often found with the lower section in a different color, usually black. But this spec is absolutely beautiful. And I think in this country, this is the sort of car you'd want a nice classic Ferrari. Maybe a convertible, but hmm, that's a matter of opinion. I want to show you guys what it's like in Marbella. There is a McLaren and there is a dog in the passenger seat. That basically sums up Marbella. So here it is, the 812 Superfast. Now this thing is just so cool. I love everything about it. I love how aggressive it looks. I love the way it sounds. But then front engine V12 Ferraris always sound awesome. Now I know there's blinkers going on, it's because it's currently parked on the side of a road, but look at all this. It's just so cool. Now we are gonna go down the road in this. Um, I'm not gonna drive it. I'm gonna let Francesco drive it, who is the owner of Rosso Corsa. Um, so it should be very interesting. Now we are in Porto Banus, probably the central and the most expensive part possibly of Spain. Now the reason why we're here is I wanted to show you the outrageous vehicles that are here. Now I don't mention cars because as you can see, there are boats for days. We're gonna focus on cars. So we have a blue 488 Spider, and this thing, the spec on this is awesome. There were loads of them done um, in this color. Obviously this was the show car, so really cool to see that. But also Chevy Camaro, something quite different here. Have a look at that number plate. At the entrance of the port then we have an RS4, a brand new one as well. And just check out those wheels, so cool. Obviously this is the wagon. Um, it's got a wicked interior, including an Alcantara steering wheel. So very cool there. We've got a Dodge from cars coming in, but as you can see, black on black, such a cool spec. So now that is a large catamaran, but now if you look over there, you can get a good glimpse of basically an island that floats. Absolutely ridiculous. There's another Bentley here. These are very, very cool. Um, finished in red, but it's obviously a convertible. Um, really pretty car indeed. Now there's another RS4 here, finished in Nardo Grey. It's obviously an 18 plate and also from Liverpool, <laughs> apparently. Also awesome wheels, Alcantara wheel, uh, steering wheel. But just such an aggressive looking car. I mean, a lot of car for the money, that's for sure. I think we have to give a special shout out to the, uh, the pink Audi TT, something very different indeed. Someone obviously has a lot of care and attention for this as the paint is peeling a little bit, but 
very outrageous indeed. Now guys, we are currently sitting in the Rolex showroom about to have a look at some pretty snazzy watches. Now this is very cool, this is an X-Class, this is the Mercedes pickup truck. I haven't actually seen one of those up close, but inside it's very cool indeed. It's sort of old school interior, it's still got all the protective film. Oh, and there goes the RS4, very nice sounding indeed. This is so exciting. I cannot tell you how excited I am. Behind me, we have a Zenvo. Over there, we have a Zenvo, obviously. And we are driving the new TSRS around the circuit. It is something I've wanted to do for ages. I obviously had the chance to do it at Goodwood, but now is the chance to really push the car and see what it's capable of. There are some fairly serious track toys here too. We've got a GTR in front of me. I think there's a GT2 RS just turned up as well. So it should be quite an extreme day, but let's head over and I'll show you the cars that are inside. Right, so this is the TSR. So this is obviously the more track focused version of the TSRS. So this is, as you can see, the interior has been stripped out, but the new wing system has just been placed on this from the TSRS, obviously the full mobile. I'll get someone to explain that a little bit better in a bit. But this is going to be the main one we're driving today, I believe. So it'll be exciting to experience it. Apparently the sound deadening inside has been completely taken out. So uh, it could be quite noisy. There probably won't be much speaking, but anyway, I'm gonna show you a bit around the circuit. So let's head out. Now, the first thing we're gonna be doing is going out with the chief test driver of the Ascari race course. So we're taking this, a Renault, Meg Renault Megane RS, something very exciting. Obviously, I drive the Focus RS quite a lot, haven't experienced this and haven't experienced the circuit. Now, unfortunately, we can't have cameras inside this car as it is Ascari's car, but we can have one in the Zenvo car, hopefully. So I'm gonna head out now and you'll see some quite cool shots of me coming past. So I'll catch you guys in a second. Right, so I've just been out in the Renault and it is, firstly, it's a hell of a car. Compared to the Focus, I think it's a little bit slower, but more importantly, the circuit, it's a very challenging circuit. And there are multiple different corners, some from quite famous race circuits as well. So what I'm gonna do now is hop straight into the Zenvo, which quite possibly could be a mistake, but I'll take it nice and slow for now. So I'll catch you guys when I'm back. Okay guys, <laughs> that was something special. That car is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, when you play around with the settings, there is so much you can do with the car. There's a wild dog setting, which I'm gonna try next time, where because of the way the throttle and the gearbox link up, the more power you give it, the quicker the gear shift. But that means that in between corners, when you downshift, there's quite a long pause. But the thing is, you sort of have to mold with the car, like as I'm sure most of you know. But Overall, a fantastic feel, and uh, hopefully, we'll get a bit more experience with it fairly soon. But I'm only going to get all this kit off and uh, hopefully, have a little walk around. So, I'll catch you guys in a bit. Okay, guys, so we've just found this in one of the lockups. It is unbelievable. I believe this is an F40 LM, obviously, the racing version of the F40. And just check out what's inside. I mean, unbelievable. We have to be quite quiet because there's people um, all around and we don't really want to disturb anyone. But I mean, just look at that wing. But uh, yeah, they've got a few GT3 RSs and lots of Lotuses and um, I can Zenoses. I think it's Zenos or Enos. I can never remember. And uh, they've got Radicals, Porsche, Cup Car, uh, some go karts. But yeah, let's have a little look, walk around. Okay, we've just found this as well, an M4 GT4. There's a lot of fours in that sentence, but no, this is a very cool car. You can see all the carbon wings, the carbon lip, big wings in the back, and obviously the interior is all stripped out as well. And down here, well, I think this is mainly Porsches to be fair, but I think we're gonna try and head downstairs and uh, see if we can find some other cars. Now, as if by magic, guys, if you have seen in the current news, there is the GT2 RS MR. This is a GT3 MR, so it's not the RS, it's the just GT2 MR. I don't know what the differences are. Please let me know in the comments down below, because I would love to know. Um, I know it's got full racing harnesses and the keys are literally just there. So um, I'll try not to steal it. <laughs> Okay.
Okay everyone, so this is the end of day one. I've driven so much stuff and I hope you guys have enjoyed mainly B-roll to be fair, but in this beautiful setting, that's what it has to be. Now, I've had a go and everything. Tomorrow, I'm gonna run you through some more technical bits. So, I'll catch you then. So you join me on day two and the last day of Ascari with Zenvo. So today, as I mentioned yesterday, I want to run you through more of the technical aspects and actually get some driving footage where I can chat to you and tell you how it feels. So I want to show you the new TSRS and some of the amazing features on it. So let's start at the back. The engine, it's a 5.8 litre twin supercharged V8 producing, get ready for this, 1177 brake horsepower now in a car that is so track focused as this that is absolutely ludicrous now you can adjust on the steering wheel i'll get to that in a second but it's an incredible way how the power is delivered because there's sensors so you don't necessarily have all of the power instantly unless it feels like you, you can use all of it so very clever there so the wing the wing is technically called a g-force censored adjustable rear wing so the reason for that it gets adjusted at 0.5 g so when it gets to 0.5 g's that's when it starts doing all of the magic and starts moving around oh excuse that's a very loud porsche it's not also it's not just g-force it's also speed so you've got speed controls and also braking so if it feels like you're going at a ridiculous pace obviously you need more downforce so it'll adjust that for you but also under heavy braking it acts as an air brake now we've all seen the mclarens do it where it lifts up but this is um well significantly more extreme now there is footage online of these wings moving around but i'm hopefully going to get some a little bit later on today where i can show you all about how this thing moves because there's a lot of skepticism or skep however that word is said <laughs> about how these cars are you know they're too out there and it's not actually going to work and things like that believe me i've taken this car around track well not specifically this one the actual other one which is the same as this for, for the track the way these things handle is unbelievable and i'm 90 percent sure without that wing it would be making a big difference with this wing it does improve the car a hell of a lot now i took that one out earlier that's the older series zenvo and obviously that's based for the road so it wasn't the most track capable car but the way these cars are built is truly truly incredible the team it's like 50 people in the whole team building these cars you know and when you buy a car like this you know everyone who builds it if there's any problems it's fixed immediately and i think with this sort of company you're getting involved in more of a company more of an adventure so something very exciting there but one main features i want to show you inside the car so let's hop in and i'll show you around now I know this may not be the interesting bits, but I want to show you how the door opens. So there's a little button here that you just press, and as you can see, then the door opens. But let's step inside, because I want to explain to you all the buttons and what they do inside of the car. So, now we're inside the car, the first thing you will see is carbon everywhere. Literally the whole interior is carbon alcantara, and this very interesting technical fibre here, which is quite soft, and it's quite nice, because if your arm's pressed up against here, it's, uh, it's quite nice. So, let me explain to you what the steering wheel does. Bearing in mind there is another Zenvo just reversing there, that is the one we'll be talking about in a bit. But, so, power, as you can see here, max, that gives it the full horsepower so that's the 1177 brake horsepower you put it to minimum that gives it 700 brake horsepower so if you're on a smaller circuit or something like that and you are going around a town you don't have to have it on a full you know it makes sense iq now this is something very very clever indeed so iq puts a sensor well there is a sensor at the rear wheel so if it finds it's losing traction it will give you less power but on straight, so it's basically a traction control assisted power delivery system, um, which is absolutely genius. I've actually experienced this in different modes in that car, and you can tell the difference. Obviously, with minimum, you can feel there's a lot less power. Maximum, the power is just vicious and constant. With IQ, you feel like it's, a, it's almost like a whole other car. Now, on the other side of the steering wheel, you have gear. Now, gear, this is something just brilliantly clever that Zenvo have done. So, road means that it's adjusted by the accelerator so if you're flat out the shifting is going to be sequential it's going to be incredibly fast 
If you're less power, it'll be nice and slow as if you're going around a town like a normal automatic car. Now you put it into race, it turns into the most vicious gearbox you could possibly imagine. Now, as you guys have seen, the shifting in this thing is already ridiculous. But when you actually pull the paddle in race mode, it kicks you around the car almost as if it was sort of like an Aventador SV sort of thing. But I'd definitely say this is more ferocious. But so the actual race mode is actually called a direct power shift so there's no clutch engagement so it's just a sequential gearbox absolutely brilliant obviously there's no horn here the horn button is just there and the paddles either side have got a really really nice feel to it but let's talk about all these bits and what they do so down here you have the key so what's quite funny is the fact that so it says TSRS on the bottom you can't put the key in that way it won't go you have to put the key in this way and then with your foot on the brake, you can press your foot on the brake, press that down, and everything will get powered up. As you can see just here, it takes a while to power up, but you also have the uh, iPad here. This has been put there just for testing and bits like that. And there you go. Now, what's quite clever is if I put it into road, as in, in the gears, you can see here the speedo's up here and you've got the gear up here and, uh, and all the information quite high up. But from here, when you're looking up here, you can't see. But I put it into race. The shifting comes down here, so you can actually see perfectly through the steering wheel. Now, I know there isn't very many companies at all that do that, but very, very clever indeed. Power, you can put it to max or minimum, but that doesn't change on the, like, on the uh, screen, apart from the little display here, it just says minimum, IQ, and max. And I love the way the fact that minimum looks quite sporty. IQ, almost the font almost looks a little bit different, but Max, you can tell it's a little bit more, well, racy. <laughs> so down here you have all the air conditioning controls like you would usually would, so recirculation, auto, AC off, and then you've got the uh, seat adjusters. Down here you've got the start button. We won't start it now, we won't start it till later. But what's genius is this gear stick. Now what I'm gonna do, because it is sequential, I'm going to disengage the ignition, but the gear stick, if you want to put it in drive, that's in drive. You want to put it in neutral, neutral, reverse, like that. So instead of like all these AMG Mercs where it clicks back, the actual thought that there was put into that is so clever. Just absolutely genius. You don't knock it to the side. You can leave it in automatic or just with a pull of a paddle, it'll go into manual. Now on the doors, you've got the window controls, you've got the mirror adjusters and the door handle, which is just a button that you just press very simply and it opens the door. Now, bearing in mind everything is carbon fibre, the door is sensationally light. You're also greeted by a rather nice plaque that just says Zenvo TSRS. Now, one of the exterior features that fascinates me is this writing and the, sign and the signs all over the car. So, as you can see, there is Zenvo along here, all on the carbon. Now, this isn't a sticker. What has happened is they've very, very lightly sanded the carbon so that you can almost feel there's a small difference in texture but gives it a very, very clear pattern. Now, what that means is that they can do anything. They've had customers where they've put their lucky number just down here. They've had customers who've put their family crest, I'm not even joking, here. They can have their name engraved. It's just so clever, but because anything that's carbon fiber, they've done this and they're coming up with new systems all the time to make these patterns even more visual. And I tell you what, they're doing a fantastic job of making these things look good. Now I know we're back at the rear again, but I want to talk about the diffuser. You can see the size of that diffuser is absolutely ginormous. It's actually taken directly from the prototype race car that Zenvo developed. The exhausts, they're an Inconel exhaust and uh, well, I think you guys know what this thing sounds like. I'm going to make sure there is plenty of footage of that because this thing sounds unbelievable. But anyway, I think it's probably about time we hop in that one and have a little chat and take it for a little drive around the circuit so I can tell you exactly what these things feel like. Okay, everyone, so we're gonna head out. Okay, and off we go, guys. So the first thing you actually notice is how responsive the gearbox is. So the car is actually in a setting called Wild Dog, which I explained to you guys earlier. It's all about how quickly the car is going to change gear. And I'll tell you what, guys, this thing is just a machine. 
It's absolutely incredible. The roll cage in it as well, it blocks the view. But when you really put your foot down, the sounds of the car, well, it's just, as you guys can tell, just unbelievable. The handling of the car as well, because it's all the aero from the wing, it is, you can feel it working, it's pushing the car around the circuit and you have so much confidence in the car. It's just incredible. So we're approaching a hairpin now. And the way the car takes the really tight corners is like nothing else. I'd relate it maybe if you had a Koenigsegg that was almost like a one-to-one -one on steroids, this would be it. And the speed it can take out of corners is unbelievable. Just incredible we're currently heading in front of a pace car which is setting a pace which means i'm actually able to talk to you guys but the gearbox is the most obvious thing it's just so precious and the brakes those brembo brakes are just fantastic and once again that noise just I, I know I keep saying unbelievable, but it really, really is. And we're coming into this chicane. Now, the one thing I know about this chicane is it's very tight, but because of the way the steering is set up, it's so precise, it is so precise. And the brakes, responsive, exactly how you want it. Right, so we just got back from the lap. That car it just amazes me every single time I drive it. But unfortunately, that brings us to the end of this event. I have to say a massive thank you to Zenvo and the Ascari Race Resorts for inviting us out here and giving us quite possibly one of the best automotive holidays a car nerd would want. And so for me, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys very soon. Cheers. Cheers.